Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. And this is my good buddy. Seth V. And we're here to talk about the cool knives that we saw in 2022 and which ones that we're actually using. Let's get into it. All right, we got a lot of knives on the table today, uh, but this is actually stuff that are our personal knives. Like we own these knives. These aren't, uh, you know, Knife Center inventory, which is usually the case uh, on yeah. these videos. Uh, so this is where we get to let our like knife freak flag fly a yeah, this, little bit. <laughs> this is all stuff that we've purchased, that we've yeah. decided to take home, basically. Yeah. We've voted with our dollars for, for these products. Mm -hmm. Um, and we did something like this last year too, where we kind of got to, we did it from home because, you know, things were uh, a little iffy there at the, uh, at last year, but, uh, we got to kind of join in with you folks, but we got some cool stuff this year. We made some predictions last year about what we were going to do in the following year. I predicted you'd buy more spider goes. There are some on the table. <laughs> there are some on the table. Yeah. Um, but we also talked about things we were, I, I was in the middle of a journey that, started uh, kind of in 2020, really. We talked about last year of trying to find like the perfect big knife for me. Um, you know, normally like three to three and a quarter inch blade is a great range for most just general purpose stuff. Yeah. Uh, accepting, you know, outdoor use, all, all kinds of other specialty stuff. The perfect pocket knife yeah. size almost. But I, I'm, you know, what's the, what's the right bigger knife for me? A lot of stuff gets really chunky and bulky. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'd been looking to find a knife that was larger, offered more reach, but still was nimble enough. And that's something I hadn't quite put my finger on last year. I think I'm there actually. Sweet. It, 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 this year I've got it. And I'll, sh I'll start by showing a few things that I haven't quite settled on yet. Uh, but like the best tech swordfish, was a really great option for that. And I picked this one up, S35VN on this Knife Center exclusive, for like 90 bucks. Great deal. Fantastic value, yeah. man. No kidding. Uh, and it has a bit of that kind of nimble quality mm -hmm. to it, despite being a four inch blade. It's a big, easy knife. To, it is a big, easy knife. We actually did a video on this, in mm -hmm. fact. Um, and this was actually featured in our uh, Big Little Combos video that we did, uh, nice. you and I together as well. Yeah, this holds up well at the end of the year. Like it's still a great value. It's yeah. still a great design. It has that combination of easy pocketability, but nice long reach, quality materials, yep. crazy good action. Okay. Cr just crazy good Ooh. value, man. Like yeah. $90 knife and you're getting that much particle steel is, is pretty darn impressive. Um, I also picked up the Spider Co Shaman, our uh, exclusive from this year with S90V steel and the burlap ha burlap burlap <laughs> handles, because uh, ultimately I I do prefer a finger safe lock just for kind of ease of mind, peace of mind, ease of use, use yeah. Um, compared to the liner lock, which is fine, but you know it's it's not my top choice. And this is a nice one too. This is a nice bigger knife. Uh, ultimately, I think the balance on this one for me personally is leading me in another direction. Uh, this is more of a, a bit, it leans a bit more into the bruiser side of things yeah. rather than the nimbler side of things. The way Spartaco have executed this grind uh, lends some extra toughness here. There's more of the full mm -hmm. stock thickness out towards the tip. Which when you're dealing with S90V on a knife like this, which isn't the toughest steel, having that little bit extra there kind of mitigates that a little bit. Yeah, definitely a bruiser though, not as yeah. nimble as... Uh, so yeah, like this is not to say it's, it's not a good knife or that I regret the purchase. It's just not quite what mm -hmm. I've been looking for. Wasn't the big knife for you. Right. Or exactly. it was, but it wasn't the one big knife. For well, you. And, it, and it is depending on like particular use, but it's not the everyday big knife that I'm, I've been looking for. Yeah. Um, this one's getting really close. And uh, we did a video earlier this year where I picked this knife out uh, amongst the uh, OTFs or all of the uh, autos actually since in the state of Virginia, it has gotten easier to uh, legally carry an automatic knife. Mm -hmm. We are not lawyers, of course. The uh, the Hogue Compound S30V blade and uh, clip point shape there, which really, you know, the, the blade shape there for an OTF is what led me to towards that because uh, it's a more just general purpose blade shape. Yeah. And despite the handles looking very uncomfortable, they actually aren't. They actually work pretty darn well. I agree with you 100%. Uh... On both counts, they, they look uncomfortable and they feel very comfortable. They feel fine. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't say they feel like ergonomically uh, uh, superb or anything like that, right. but they feel fine. 
like there's no angels singing exactly, but yeah. I, I think it's actually quite a comfortable handle. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got everything enclosed, so it just feels like mm -hmm. a you know a nice solid stick of something, a handle, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> and that works well. I've I've carried that uh, quite a bit, a little, a little bit more over the summer, after, right after I first got it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the knife that I've been carrying for like the last month, and all of a sudden it just really clicked for me. It's something I've actually had for a couple of years and carried for a little bit and then just kind of put to the side because I was looking for something a little different at the time. But that's the Presidio 2 from Benchmade. And I have been, when I came back to this, it was eye-opening in a way because so many times I'm you know looking through my knife drawer and my eyes literally just passed over this thing. Mm -hmm. just, just completely didn't even register that it was there. But compared to the old aluminum handled versions, this knife is a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. and yet it is also lighter. Yeah, the, it, it's nice. It's really nice what they did with it, and I'm, I'm gonna pick up. Yeah, you actually have. Yeah, one of my, yeah. I bought this this year, even though this is a discontinued knife. Um, yeah, I like this design. I like the character of it. I like, you know, you can see Mel Pardew's name right on the blade, mm -hmm. um, but they made some improvements in this generation. Yeah, like that feels a bit chunkier, which some, you know, could be appealing to different people. But for me, mm -hmm. I was looking for that everyday agility here. And the balance with these CF Elite handles is there. Mm -hmm. The downward angle of the blade helps the tip point really naturally, even though it's farther out from the, uh, the handle itself. The grind's there. I mean, folks know I love a crossbar lock too. It's been pretty fantastic. I've, I've really been happy to have kind of come back to this knife. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the handle is neutral, kind of like a Griptilians in that all kinds of different position, hand positions and hand sizes will work. And I think that gets down to the reason why I initially set it aside a couple years ago, is in kind of the uh, the squeezy gorilla grip thing going on. It's not as, you know, it's it's just flat sides. Yeah, the Griptilian gives you more shape. For yeah, sure. and coming from my, my fixed blade background, I was looking for more of that which is nice, but it only matters for like an EDC folder a certain amount sometimes. Yeah. But yeah. especially when you compare it to, well, especially the, the small Presidio, which you also picked up here, mm -hmm. you can really see kind of like the generational leap here. Yes. And I think a good set of compromises to get kind of the big easy status as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, moved from aluminum to the CF Elite, uh, moved the size up a little bit, but changed the handle shape so that you actually get quite a bit more space on the handle. You know, the guard's not quite as pronounced. Little, little things, but they add up to kind of a generational yeah. loop. Yeah. And you really notice it in the way the axis lock feels. It's snappier, it's more fluid on the clothes. And I don't know what they're doing differently. All I know is just that knife feels fantastic. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I love the Presidio. And I'm really, really thinking seriously about getting that exact one for my collection. Um, We're bad influences on each other. I know. <laughs> I Right now I am super happy with this as kind of like my favorite everyday big knife right now. It's just, it's hitting on all, on all marks for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you have, we've shown the, uh, the Presidios you have on the table here. This kind of delves into the, one of the things you've been doing or we're doing more last year and into this year, which is some yeah, vintage, older stuff. <laughs> vintage knives, discontinued <laughs> knives. Uh, taking the opportunity to kind of go back into the archives and pick up some classics I missed or always wanted to get but never had the means to. And now I, I uh, can go back and overpay for them a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts, but you know, I love the knives too much not to do it. Um, <laughs> the Presidio was one I really wanted to get for myself. Uh, something about the silhouette always really worked for me. Um, I like a bit of guard, uh, I like the size, you know, the axis lock is great. Just a, a piece of Benchmade history, really. really. What's cool about the, the small one there is 440C hollow ground blade, which is definitely a, a leap back in time for Benchmade. Yeah, yeah. And even the flagship just features 154CM, um, which I think at this point Benchmade is completely Mm -hmm. replaced throughout their so. whole line. I mean, I still have a 154 CM Griptilian that keeps on trucking, man. Yeah, it's solid and, and the quality is is there. I mean, this is beautifully made. The milling's fantastic. The aluminum's perfect. 
Um, I did replace the pocket clip because it came with a painted clip. But other than that, I mean, it's the uh, the genesis of the, the heavy duty knife series that I hope continues mm -hmm. well into the future. The, the Presidio is awesome. Now the question is, if you get one of the CF Elite models, do you think you're gonna keep that one? Yeah, yeah. I will. There's enough differences. It's a little smaller. Yeah, let me hold them side by side. It's a little smaller, like noticeably smaller. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite a bit heavier with the aluminum. The, uh, this feels like a totally different knife, even though it shares the same name. And it's got some visual similarities. Like it's instantly recognizable as Oh Hey Presidio, yeah. but it is, they are quite different in the hand. Definitely, definitely. Cool. But yeah, those these two were actually the only two vintage knives I bought this year. I went a little heavier on the vintage stuff last year. Um, and honestly, I really only got this because I found one dead stock here over at the <laughs> warehouse. Just forgotten, you know, yeah. not, not in the system, but still which, on the shelf. Which don't ask us to go looking for something old like that. This is something that just like never happens. No, I just happened. It was literally <laughs> on in between two shelves. Like it had been lost. Yeah. Um, and just, I found it. Just crazy. Who rescued who? Who rescued who? who, rescued who? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a little That's knife. Cool. Yeah, That's cool. Tugged on my heartstrings, I had to get it. And I didn't have to overpay for it. I got to pay the original retail price. Oh, dang. Yeah. So speaking of things that kind of tug at one's heartstrings, <laughs> we all know I am a fixed blade guy, like primarily. And yet I think you bought more fixed blades this year than I did. I brought relatively few for me. Wow. I consider that a success. <laughs> but you, you've been looking to find some uh, some fixed blade shaped holes in your lineup. Absolutely. Or in your collection, which I don't have many of those holes left anymore. Right. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. There's still more holes to fill, uh, but I'm really happy with the fixed blades I got this year. Um, it's been a, well, I started with this one. This is the Spyderco Darn Dow. Um, quite an outlandish <laughs> fixed blade. Really even stretching the definition of the word knife, frankly. Yeah. Um, it's it's a big knife, it's a small machete maybe, eh, more of a chopper than a machete, but um, I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and preempt your programming here. You said earlier to me that the more you've used this thing and attempted to find, or to use it around the home and all that, mm -hmm. the more convinced you are it's basically just for stabbing. Yeah. <laughs> or, or for, for Aggression. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think it's it, it's DNA comes from the sword side mm -hmm. of things more from the knife side of things. Um, but you know, I'm okay with that. It's it's a glorious package. I mean, this, the sheath alone is absolutely really beautiful. Well done. Um, Bob Lum design, um, you know, sort of a legend. And it, yeah, I, I get it to work. It can do some machete stuff. It's a little too heavy for that, but it's got a nice tapered tank, so it's got good balance. Um, it's not as good of a chopper as it looks. There's a bit of a resonance that kind of gets in its own way. Mm. Um, you, where you really feel the shocks in your hand when you're chopping. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've had fun with it and I just plan to keep it um, because of its beauty, because of its, just what, the way it feels. And it's, it's unusualness in the grander Spyderco lineup in general. Like that, they don't do as much of this sort of thing yeah. as other things. I am sort of a Spyderco collector. So this this is, cool just to have a piece yeah. like this from Spyderco. Mm -hmm. I think the, the next fixed blade on the table, last year you had an SE6 you showed us. Yeah. And you were telling me that this might be replacing that. In yeah. Your, in your mind, right? Well, and in my collection, in fact, the, the SE6 is already off to a better home, <laughs> I hope. Um, and I liked the SE6. It's still probably, if pressed, I would say the best all around, out of the box survival package. Um, especially solid. for the money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a solid one for sure, especially the the, the, con the new uh, 3D contoured handle yeah, versions, yeah. for sure. Great knife, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted in a fixed blade of that size class. I wanted a little bit more chopping power. I find myself just wishing I had more, more power with mm -hmm. the SE6. Mm -hmm. The full flat grind kept things thin and slicey, which is great, but... Not what you wanted. Not what I wanted. So I sprung for this custom smatch it from Dave Wenger. Um, That's very cool. <laughs> yeah, I was cool. impressed enough with his Boker collaborations, which is honestly the, the first time I heard of him, mm. um, to check out his work, go to his website, and saw this and figured, you know what? That looks awesome. 
And it is. It is pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, 3V steel, the, the Smatchet blade gives a little bit more mass up here. And this is smaller than like the original Smatchets, so to speak. Yes. Um, but it is, you know, it, it has translated so well into like an outdoorsy package, really. This this isn't like, doesn't strike me as like the combat-y heritage of the, no. you know, the, the, the full, full fat Smatchets, whatever you want to call it. He kind of turned it into a woods tool. Yeah. It's kind of like a, Almost like a Canadian belt knife blade shape to it, without yeah. without the, uh, the the kinks and angles going on. Mm -hmm. But it, it appeals to me the way you know an Esmuk appeals to me, which we'll get to later. <laughs> yeah, and you know, going custom, I really wanted to buy some custom fixed blades. I think there's tons of value in custom fixed blades. I think everybody who loves knives should buy custom fixed blades. Um, you know, the fact that you can just go to a maker's website and more often than not, there's something in stock and you can pick one up with no drama, you know, no no uh, uh, drop dates or mm -hmm. anything like that. It's, it's refreshing and you get really elite performance. I mean, 3V steel is, is cool and all, but what really makes this knife cut well is the hand applied grind, edge geometry, um, bit of a Scandi Vex thing going on here. It doesn't look fancy, but like when you put it, when you feel it and you, you put it to work. As, I mean, as soon as I put it in my hand, it's like this has got, you know, one tool option bushcraft knife written all over it. You know, you got a very center line point for drilling. You've yep. got a comfortable Micarta handle. You've got, it's just a great shape. I'm, I'm really digging it as well. Yeah, really having fun with this. Um, if I had to pick one thing of yours to like, trade, it would be, <laughs> that would be it for me, I think. Nice. Very cool. That's great. That's high praise for a, uh, a bushcrafty outdoors blade. But I would probably, I would, I have like mods in mind for it already too. <laughs> but I, I like that a lot. Yeah. You got some EDC fixed blades this year. Yeah, another one of my big hunts for 2022 was a EDC fixed blade that I could live with. Um, I haven't found a pocket sheath that I've really loved yet. Still looking for that. So these just came in regular leather sheaths. Yeah, let's let's just touch on them real briefly here. Let's. Yeah. This one's cool. This they're, is the Merlin. They're all cool. From uh, Jesse Jaros. Uh, just dead simple, you know, drop point shape. But the uh, the little magic trick, if you will, that it pulls off is it's got a convex distal taper, but a full hollow ground blade. Hmm. And so the 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 blade geometry on this is. It's pretty sweet. It has some unexpected kind of toughness up here through the belly, but a really thin edge still, and I've I've really enjoyed using yeah. it. Yeah, it is very cool. Very cool. What's the steel on this one? Do you remember? Fifty-two one hundred. Fifty-two one hundred. Yeah, classic. Very yeah. nice. I've kind of I've kind of tried to keep it keep it pretty. It could take a patina real quick, but I've uh, there's there's little hints of it going. Yeah, on. that's cool. That's really neat. Next up. Next up. Yeah, another one of my EDC fixed blade searches. And another um, entry from what has quickly become one of my favorite brands of all time, uh, Moki. Ooh, wow. Yeah. That is high praise indeed. Definitely. I... They're fantastic. I mean, we featured uh, their, a couple of their knives on our Hidden Gems series, which we occasionally do. Yeah. They're astonishingly good, especially for the money. Yeah. And this little fixed blade is just such, so charming with its kind of too short blade and uh, <laughs> hand sculpted handle. I love the jimping on the inside here. Um, it's it's polished to almost a mirror shine, but it still feels kind of rough and tumble the way the blade is shaped. And that's where stuff like VG10 steel, which you know some people may say is inferior, but don't believe them, <laughs> can have an advantage over some of the like the real high wear resistant particle steels. You can get a finish like that. Yeah. Without spending hours and hours and hours and hours to get it. I mean, just, if, if you're if you're a little hesitant on the uh, price versus materials quotient, get one in your hand and you see why these things are just so special. Yeah, yeah. Moki does not make advanced knives. They're not like on the cutting edge of, of metallurgy or but even would, manufacturing. But I would say they're sophisticated. Very sophisticated. So much handwork went into this. Um, it is really surprising that they cost as little as they do, given like how much handwork is just visible yeah, in these things. Yeah, I agree. You got several monkeys, actually. Yeah. <laughs> this one is an even better example of like just the level of craftsmanship that they're working at. Um, this is the Berg Pro Trail. 
a kind of a mini bushcraft knife. You actually got two sizes of this this year, didn't you? I did. I got the, <laughs> I got the full size one, and this is the mini, which comes in this lovely little drop sheath here. Very nice. Beautiful sheath, by the way. Convex ground. They feel like laminated steel. They feel here. like fancier Felicnevens. Yeah. These do. Yeah. You've got the sculpting on the handle is just excellent. This shape, I was really taken with this. I, I started sketching things inspired by this when, uh, as soon as you showed it to me in a way, it's just something really cool about it. It's kind of laid back and uh, the way the handle kind yep. of cuts that way, you can wrap your thumb around it. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, a, it's a neat boy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So really been enjoying um, these fixed blades. This one's new enough, I haven't really put it through its paces yet, but it cuts great so far. Now I actually only got, if, if I'm not forgetting something, I've only purchased three fixed blades this year. Wow. Not counting the kitchen knife. Two of them are on this table. I should say like these, these aren't everything we bought in the past year, but it's most of the stuff and, and yeah. kind of is representative of, of where our head's at. I did get some Nesmux this year. Nice. Uh, this is the latest one I got, which is from Bearing Made Knives. Ooh. Which I've been waiting for just the right Nesmuk of theirs to come along to spring for, and, and this one was it. I mean, the like the Skagel style front end of the, uh, the handles here are fantastic. The sheep horn on this particular piece is really cool, especially because each side is presents completely differently. You got the kind of craggly side mm -hmm. here. A little more rustic on that side. And then check out the other side, completely smooth. Mm -hmm. Just the character there is awesome. And then the blade, I don't even remember what steel this was. It might be 01, but the finishing on it, is, they're just so charming, so beautiful. And when this one popped up, uh, they posted about it. I, I had to spring on that one. I, this is not even a brand that we carry here at the Knife Center, but it's just gorgeous. Comes with a nice tooled sheath as well. You know, yeah. Simple, but really nicely done. Yeah. Made in Montana, I think. That's awesome. I love how thin the horn handle gets right towards the guard. They're just so, so gorgeous, so gorgeous. And as soon as I saw that one, I was like, mine. <laughs> and fortunately it worked out for me. I was able, nice. to, able to get it done. Yeah, um, custom fixed blades, they're, they're not like impossible to get. Yeah, although this one was kind of Sabenza money. Mm. <laughs> um, but money it was, well spent. It's money well spent. Yeah. I mean, my Nesmuk, Nesmuks are knives I mostly buy to collect nowadays and that is just top shelf quality right yeah. now. Um, I also picked up one of the first production runs of the Nomad EDC from Work Tough Gear. You folks know I love this knife. I picked this as my best, uh, or my, the best new fixed blade of the year. Certainly my favorite uh, new release, because you know, customs are kind of one-off type of things by very yeah. nature, but that was a production knife video. This thing is so cool. It's kind of a tactical Nesmuk, <laughs> if you want to get, yeah. get into it. I mean, it's got a similar kind of belly treatment, but they're way more kind of pokey than most mm -hmm. ne than most Nesmucks are. And I've, I, the way I've said it, and I don't know how to say it any better, which is why you've heard me say this, mm -hmm. it's a blade shape that's endeavoring to do just about anything this size of blade could possibly do, and does a halfway convincing job of actually pulling it off. Yeah. <laughs> they're just so cool. ATS 34 on this uh, this first production run. It's got such a cool sweep. Work Tough's quality is fantastic. I mean, just look at how refined that convex edge is on yeah. that knife. I mean, it's On any other knife, awesome. I would assume that this is an edge that you applied mm. because of how how nicely done it is, how well polished it is. But I mean, I've, I've seen these fresh out of the box and they They're basically like look like this. Yeah, yeah, just so, so cool. Kydex sheath came with a, uh, a tech lock actually, or no, a, uh, an ulti clip actually. The, yeah, this is such an interesting knife and it really does work. It's like, I don't know how, but it really does. Yeah. <laughs> this handle shape is, is odd, it but it works. It looks wrong, mm -hmm. just like this Hogue. It looks wrong, but put it in your hands, it's like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just fantastic knife, very, very cool. I need to use it more. It kind of got put in a box for a few months there in the middle of the year when I was going through the, uh, the move. I mean, uh, we can't the use location. them all at once. It's sort of hard. <laughs> That actually did put a damper on some uh, acquisitions for a while. But uh, one of my Blade Show purchases, we've talked about this and uh, didn't actually show it, custom handmade bread knife for my kitchen. I, I'm endeavoring to replace, make sure everything in my kitchen, in my kitchen knife block, mm -hmm. but it's not a block, I use a magnet and the thing, but 
your set feels special. Mm -hmm. Like if it's production, it's got to have a story behind it too. Like I, I just don't need to, but I want to, you know? Yeah. And this is a Kyle Daly custom bread knife, CPM 154. Crazy awesome. I mean, Koa wood handles, Hawaiian Koa. The file work on the handle part here, filled with resin. So normally you would see it on the spine, but instead we got a crown spine here, so it's super comfortable. It's nice. Alternating teeth for the, uh, the serrations here. So each, every other one is sharpened on this side, and then the other ones are sharpened off of this side. That's cool. That's a cool way to get around the problem ser serrated hedges have of you know, being asymmetrical. Possibility to and, wander. Yeah, you know. pulling one way. But man, his stuff is just so, so good. I'm, I'm real happy you were actually able to carry some of his, uh, his knives now. We've got more on the way. And how many custom bread knives are out there? Like not as many. So I'm a knife guy. I had to, I had to flex a little bit and <laughs> yeah. go for that. It's a big move. The custom bread knife. Yeah. Yeah. It shows you're serious. I think people have really been looking forward to hearing my thoughts on this right here. Oh, right. Because you kind of have... Uh... I publicly said that, yes. that you're switching after so many years. So for about 14 years, I've carried this knife or a variant of it, uh, the Wanger Evo Grip S18. And a couple, two months-ish ago, something like that, I can't remember timing anymore, I decided to give the Leatherman Free T4 a try. So I've not carried this, this Swiss Army knife in the intervening time. This was the guy. The highlights as to why I wanted to give it a try is, I do get more functionality with the uh, the Evo grip, but with this particular knife, the the features that are missing aren't ones that really affect my day to day. Sure. But all of the tools that are left are one hand opening, which the Swiss Army knife, of course, is not. They're all locking and they're finger safe locks all around. That is you know an important thing to me. So it's really cool, and I've really been enjoying using it. However. My plan was derailed a little bit along the way. I have not gone back to the Swiss Army knife, mm -hmm. but maybe a month into this thought experiment here, Leatherman brought back the juice. The juice. The juice was back, and I bought several. Then they put them on sale for a really stupid low price for Black Friday, and I bought several more <laughs> to have some backups. They squeezed you. Because... <laughs> because not talked about as much, but in addition to my primary knife and my backup Swiss Army knife, which has been my, my thing for so, so long, I've lately, for the last year and a half or so, been carrying this as well in my fifth pocket in jeans. And it's a SOG Sync 2 Traveler. It's a bladeless model. So I initially bought this as a, you know, a, a travel safe multi-tool, mm -hmm. which I've gotten it through TSA before a couple times, so that's nice. But the reason I keep carrying it, or have kept carrying it day to day, is it's a real compact way to carry a set of pliers. It doesn't take up a lot of space. Yeah, nice. Um, the implements on it are so-so. But the the drivers and such are just fine. But the scissors and the file on it mm -hmm. leave a little bit to be desired, uh, and that's why it's never kind of fully replaced like one of my bladed uh, stuff, like the Swiss Army knife. But my, my kind of EDC world is, I'm shaking it up a bit this year. <laughs> nice. Between you know, going for the bigger knives and, and this here and, and thoughts of downsizing a lot of stuff in my collection that I'm not really using anymore. Mm -hmm. The idea of being able to combine these two things with something like the juice made me go, hey. So right now I'm carrying this XE6. I also got a few of the CS4s, which I think handle a little better. This mm -hmm. is a little bulky for its size, which is not prohibitive, but it's the same reason I don't want to carry like my Leatherman Wave on my belt every day. I just don't, feel, much. I don't feel like it. Yeah. If, I, if I'm going somewhere where I need it, yeah, I throw it on, I have no problem. But I've, uh, I've got it in my head now that I'm gonna be modding uh, the CS4s. Basically, I, and people are gonna hate me this, for this for destroying juices, <laughs> but I'm gonna remove the uh, file from the XC6 or one of the XC6s and replace the saw blade on the CS4 and have everything I need from you know this basically on yep. there plus the set of pliers. Yeah, they're not one hand openable. Not yeah, they're not locking, but the size to kind of feature packed ratio. It's so dense. It's hard to ignore yeah. for me. So I think that's the direction I'm going now. The uh, the free T4, however, 
definitely still has a place in my rotation, even if I'm mostly carrying it on the weekends right now. And weekends uh, these days are mostly spent around the house, just hanging out. I may not be in uh, like fully clothed for uh, going out, like PJ pants, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And I would always clip a knife to my pocket because I've lost Swiss Army knives that way by mm -hmm. throwing these into pockets. Mm -hmm. Get lost in couch cushions. The first, uh, the first in this series of knives that I had actually got lost in a recliner and chewed up. But this has a pocket clip on it. And I've been throwing this uh, into my pocket on weekends and loving it. Got the multi-tool stuff, got the one hand opening blade. It's great. Yeah. These are sweet. I, I don't often think about these tools, to be totally honest, because in my mind, Leatherman is synonymous with the pliers. pliers. Yeah, yeah, right. right. Um, and, you know, carrying around a Leatherman or even any kind of folding pliers, like once you have that tool, it just offers such a unique capability that you're gonna miss it when you don't have it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna find ways to use it all the time. Um, uh, but this is cool. Yeah. It's a great little knife. Yeah, you've really been on a, on a quest for both the perfect pocket multi-tool and the perfect travel multi-tool. Yeah, that is something that I've, uh, I don't have any examples here on the table, but I'm, I'm working on some ideas. Because again, like I mentioned, this, you know, the scissors in the file, which are important to me, are, are, are kind of mediocre on this tool, if we're being honest. So I've got some workarounds for now, but I've also got some ideas, which you may see next year when we do this video. Sweet. Um, I, I think I'm gonna need to reconsider my rule, my arbitrary <laughs> personal rule against um, those newfangled Swiss Army knives. <laughs> you, mean, I, you mean this design has been around for 15 to 20 years <laughs> at this point? Uh-huh. <laughs> I've always just dismissed them and, and, and kind of limited myself to just the classic, you know, uh, equal end, yeah, rounds. No, none knives. of the contoured, none of the inlays. You don't. You didn't want anything to do. No, with those, I, I didn't even consider them. But that does offer a unique feature set. Um, I don't know. Maybe. And it's one of the few. One. It's one of the few sacks in this size where you can get a nail, a fingernail file. Which you've heard me talking about it. Like that's that's something I use. Yeah. So. It's a and sweet tool. The locking blade is cool. All of that. Uh, speaking of locking blades, how about a, I'll, I'll show one non-locking blade and then we'll throw back to you here. Sure. Uh, this is the most recent acquisition of mine. I've been meaning to pick one up for a little while and it is the slip joint version of the Lil Native from Spyderco. Two and a half inch blade, non-locking, and yet you have security from the choil. This is my compliance knife mm -hmm. is the way I kind of frame this. Um, Two and a half inches, most places, if, you, if there is a blade length restriction, a three inch blade, you'll still be able to get away with it. But there's a few specific places where I happen to go on time, from time to time where a two and a half inch blade is the, max. the thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think we should be able to carry whatever knife we want, but I don't want to be the test case either. <laughs> no. um, so I picked this up and I almost picked up one of our exclusives with the compression lock and the crew wear steel at the same time. Mm -hmm. But holding them both in hand next to each other, the slip joint does it well enough. I don't need the other one, mm -hmm. quite honestly. Um, it's a small knife, but it feels more solid than a two and a half inch blade. I mean, you got the full grip. The only thing I'm changing about it is I got a, a, a more subtle uh, deep carry clip coming, something that's not as shiny. Because again, compliance knife, I don't need to draw attention to it. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. Yeah. This is this is one that's that's had a bit of a slow rollout. All the different variants from Spider Co. But the it's little really, native in general, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's really cool though to see them kind of growing this family of USA made um, small knives. Uh, you know, I would compare this to like the the Dragonfly in their lineup. Mm -hmm. And yet it's compared to the Dragonfly specifically, a similar size. But this has way more, way more, way more potatoes in in the meat hooks here. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, it 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 pushes that. Uh, I the idea is in the dragonfly even further. Uh, small footprint, really big feel in the yeah. hand. Yeah, love and it. And it, it's something that I can take anywhere. Caveat, of course, and not feel like I'm giving up too much. I still have. Yeah. Something that I don't worry about whatsoever. And now that it's well established too, I mean, we're going to see uh, exclusive sprint runs. There's going to be special versions of that knife. So, I hope so. Yeah, it's cool stuff. You've got some kind of some slip joints and some smaller knives over here. Yeah, let's talk about uh, this 
I don't even know the name of this knife, to be totally honest, because I bought hmm. it direct from Moki on their only in Japanese website. Oh my. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's, it was not expensive, um, and it it's, is very old It's school. very throwback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pin construction, chunky thumb stud, lock, mid lock back, molded handles. Uh, but it, ha it has one of the classic advantages of a molded handle though. And that is low price with a sophisticated yeah. contour. Yeah, the shape of this handle is, it's not quite on the level with this fixed blade, but it, it gestures at it. It's, and it's in the same ballpark, yeah. Mm -hmm. So cool. Super, super comfortable. I love how lightweight it is. Uh, no pocket clip, which I can live with, you know, just because of how lightweight this is, I can toss it in my pocket, forget about it, still open it one-handed, close it one-handed. Mm -hmm. Aus 8 steel. Um, Be a nice little garden knife. Yeah, I bought a bunch of them in different colors. I've mm -hmm. given a couple away, kept this one. Uh, I just love how it feels. I love putting this in my pocket. Not a fancy knife, not an expensive knife, not even a knife on paper that I think most people would think twice about. Yeah. But I and, and really like it. If anyone came out with this now as a new product, it would be a head scratcher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of cool here, actually. It's got the same thing the Dozier's got and that the thumb stud's reversible, mm -hmm. and they got the cutout on both sides there for the thumb stud delay, and that's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, well thought out. Yeah, it's a beautiful little product, um, but definitely a throwback. Mm -hmm. But yeah, something I appreciated this year, and just, I just like that Moki made it, you know? They, they're they not, um, yeah, that's all I have to yeah. say about that. <laughs> you got a slip joint there as well? Yes. This one was fun, this is the, uh, Knife Center exclusive version of Pena's Apache slip joint. They and turned out so good. They did turn out great. I kind of had a big role in badgering enough people to get them to put <laughs> K390 here. Um, so I had, to, I had to get one. I, I love K390. I think it is such a natural fit for these new school slip joints. I mean, if you want the, the old school patina and sort of feel of those carbon steel slip joints, but with modern performance. There you go. Yeah, K390 yeah. is perfect for it. Yeah. The split uh, inlays also came out really good. Mm -hmm. Give, give you the, uh, the faux bolstered look. Yeah, th those turned out great. And, you know, made by Riot, of course, so the quality is impeccable too. And just listen to it. Yeah. Fantastic. Great walk and talk. It's broken in beautifully. I haven't had to touch the pivot or anything yet. Um, sharpened it up just a little bit. And <laughs> he actually sharp was sharpening this in. <laughs> we were driving down to Blade Show over the over the summer, and we're all uh, you know we're getting to Atlanta. We're all starting to get tired, and coming from the back row, we hear. <laughs> and Seth has a tiny little stone like this. And he's sharpening his paper knife <laughs> in the moving van going down the interstate. Uh, not ideal conditions. <laughs> behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't stab but, you though, did I? No, there's a seat in the way. That's yeah. a very cool knife. <laughs> yeah, great knife, great memories. Um, I'm honored to have even, you know, had a tiny part in making this knife into a real thing. And, you know, I couldn't let it uh, slip past without picking one up. For sure, for mm. sure. The baby banter too. Um, I, I just needed to try one. Um, again, it kind of has some of the DNA of my, my, some of my favorite small knives, the Spider-Code well, Dragonfly. It's got that, that little big knifey thing that it's going for a little bit. You can still get the bigger grip. Yeah, yeah, but Civivi's quality is, um, you know, unquestionable. They always deliver. The Micarta version kind of had a cool story with the full-size banter, having to essentially recall them and re-engineer the whole thing. I like the drab military-esque look of this version of the baby banter. And uh, yeah, just honestly, I just wanted to put one in my pocket. Mm -hmm. It was a bit of an impulse buy, but it's stuck around and I don't think it's going anywhere. It's a really great little knife mm -hmm. and uh, something I do still reach for. Next two knives are some of my favorites from this year too. The, uh, the, the first one here, the Wii, nearly made it onto my uh, my favorite folders of the year yeah, video. This is the Wii Vision R, uh, designed by Snex Tan, with his um, Superlock, they call this one. This knife is so weird. It's straight <laughs> up weird. It's so weird that 
it is almost annoying to carry in certain <laughs> ways. And and um, let me go tell, on. Tell us more. Because I will also say right now that this is my knife of the year. That this is for me the best knife that came out this year. Um, it, its design kind of forces you to adapt to it rather than the other way around, especially the way the, the pocket clip is on the back here, it takes some getting used to. Um, the deployment takes a little getting used to, the unlocking takes a little get, getting used to, but once you adapt to it, it delivers a phenomenal package. Yeah, I mean, I think the shape is great. I always appreciate uh, folders that have a nod towards kind of food preppiness, and yeah. this one definitely has that with its angles and its blade shape here. The lock, I love an ambidextrous finger safe lock, and you get, got that here. Mm -hmm. I would change a few things, and that's why it didn't make it to mine. I, I would you know go for a different pocket mm -hmm. clip thing uh, than the uh, the spine mounted clip there. But it is even even with those caveats, it was it was a close contender. Uh, for my end of the year videos, for sure. Yeah, and even though I just called it annoying, I don't really think I'd change anything about the pocket clip. Um, I could do with a thumb stud maybe, especially if my hands are sweaty. But to that, I, I mean, I liked this so much that I'm actually on um, Snex's books for a custom version. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's not making many knives. I don't know if I'll ever actually get one, but- uh, your name's down. My name's down, I got my fingers crossed <laughs> and I, I like this enough, enough that I'm willing to buy it again at a much higher cost. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, I really recommend it. If you can live with its quirks, they become features. Now this next knife has, they've credited Snex yeah. for the, you know their recoil lock. Same locking. On the Sandrin Monza. And this did make it onto my, uh, my best of the year video. Yeah, this is a special knife. Um, not just because it was the first production design to use, well actually no, not the first production design, uh, another Sandrin was the first to use this lock, but yeah, not just because of the uniqueness of the lock, but the blade material, tungsten carbide, just ridiculously thin. You know, ridiculously thin. Yeah, like two dimensionally thin. <laughs> uh, the edge retention's unreal, I mean I haven't touched it, it's still uh, sticky sharp. Yeah, it was just a special, feeling knife and it came out at a time where I was kind of looking for something special and uh, so I picked one up. It's special enough that I've continued to carry it throughout the year and um, yeah, I keep trying to wear out that blade but it's just not happening. Yeah, I mean, I can see the marks of use on it. It looks like you got a little, little bit of uh, adhesive residue. Oh yeah, lots of stub boxes. Stubbornly going, hey, I'm still here. Yeah. 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 No, they're very cool. Um, so I think we're gonna end the video now, after the next bits. We've each got some stuff that's more kind of like the bread and butter stuff that we've always kind of gravitated towards. Mm -hmm. um, For you, it's it's these uh, finger safe, well. With well, the, the first one's not the finger safe yeah. here, but most of them are, but the, so the, the, the kind of unique new blade material of that is our transition back to the tactile rock wall, which, I mentioned like my, my EDC thinking, my EDC uh, bank of tools to pull from is feeling like I'm shaking things up a little bit. And this knife right here, I've actually bought three of. <laughs> <laughs> I bought the original version before we, before we basically became aware that we were gonna be able to do an exclusive version. Mm -hmm. This is the exclusive version with the uh, Knife Center exclusive uh, knurling on it, uh, although it's machined in, it's not actually knurled, uh, but it's the uh, the gunstock pattern. And I actually, what's really cool to me is we worked together with Tactile Knife Company. I actually drew this inlay shape yeah. for them and said, hey, what if we did this? And they executed it. They thought it was a great idea. And I bought two of those, one for me, one as a gift. Because they just turned out so dang cool. You've got Magna Cut Blade Steel as the, like the, the new hotness, mm -hmm. along with your uh, your tungsten carbide there. And this hits a lot of marks for me for what I look for in a, a formal carry or a gentleman's knife, a fancier carry, without being too blingy. I don't like things that are too blingy, yeah. quite honestly. Three inch blade, it's important for me because a lot of the times nowadays where I might need a fancier knife, I might be going up to Washington DC for a wedding or something like that. Mm -hmm. And yes, of course I carry knives at weddings. I mean, you don't. Uh, <laughs> Three inch blade, magna cut, simple shape, not a very threatening thing, important for a gent's knife. 
deep carry clip. You do have a liner lock there, even though I'm a primarily a finger safe guy, it's not enough to stop me here. What's cool about this is it kind of bridges the gap between two of my other kind of go-to knives for this genre, and that's my small Sabenza, which I've got uh, Coca Bolo inlays. I'm pretty sure it's Coca Bolo. I always forget. I think actually no, I think they're Bacote inlays. Hmm. It's a small Sabenza with brownish wood inlays, Sabenza 21, and gold thumb stud. That's a great formal carry for me. I've also got uh, the Ziba MS3. Oh yeah. Uh, and I've also got actually an MKM Flame, the production version. Uh, that MKM put out. Uh, our friend Igor over there gave me one of the uh, the Damasteel overruns of a special edition nice. there, which is just I mean, so sweet and so generous of him. Um, the knife is sweet. Not, not, Igor's not sweet. Yeah, he is kind of sweet. But it's <laughs> neither here nor there. But this knife kind of bridges the gap between those two designs, and mm -hmm. it's slim like the like the uh, flame, and yet it has a more girthy capability than mm -hmm. the flame. The flame is has a more um, dainty is not the right word, but a, a more narrow feel. Yeah. Whereas the Saben, small Sabenza feels like you could gorilla grip it a little better. This one has kind of the best of both worlds there. And yeah, it may not feel quite as refined as the Sabenza, but in my, my mission to kind of simp like the idea of simplifying the stuff I've got, I've got folders that I'm not using anymore and I need to find a way to kind of get rid of some and, and pass them on. Um, Talk about ultimate shakeup. If I had to bring things down, if I could only have three pocket knives, excluding fixed blades, ex excluding multi tools, mm, boy. it's quite the thought experiment. It is, and today at least, I think I could pull it off with this as the gents knife, as well as a uh, a nicer looking g general three inch EDC. Sure, you can pass in both rules. It, sure. it could. It, it definitely flexes into both rules. Looks just as good in a suit as it does in a pair of blue jeans. It really does. This knife, my compliance knife, which is a great small utility knife, whether you're thinking of it as a compliance knife or not. Those two and the Presidio. Ooh, nice, Presidio made it in. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, that's, that's the bigger knife, so you got more reach for bigger jobs. It's great EDC option. It's a decent outdoor option. Again, lacks a little bit in the, uh, the, the Gorilla sure. Grip. But I'm gonna have a fixed blade there anyway with right, a better right. with a better gorilla grip. And it's a you know slightly you know, bigger thing if I need it to if I if I have a desire to carry a more intimidating knife. Yeah. I really could I'm not going to go down <laughs> to just three, but I could do it and I wouldn't I wouldn't be too unhappy about it, I don't hmm. think. Um, just real quick, the last couple things I got, uh, I do like the three to three and the th three and three eighths, three to three and three eighths inch. Blade size is a great size with finger safe locks. The Kaiser Drop Bear, which I think is the the folding knife of the year. You know, you've got your uh, your Vision R right there. Both both on a different day, I could be swayed that way too. <laughs> it's so I'm, cool. I'm with you on the Drop Bear. Yeah. It's a special knife. They they knocked it out of the park with their iteration of the crossbar lock here. I won't go too in depth because we've talked about it a lot. The three inch drop point blade is cool. It's distinctive, which a distinctive drop point shape is hard to do. Mm -hmm. Everything's put together so well. The finger safe quality here, the just the satisfaction of the action. It's like, you know, people decry like, oh, you know, who cares about fidget friendliness? Don't do this or that. It's like racking a, a really satisfying bolt action on a rifle. There's just this tactile satisfaction that you get out of something like that. Yeah. And you get it with something like this. That's that's where Fidget friendly can be cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the last one, I finally picked up a mini Crooked River. I've been not buying one for a while. The uh, the pack of wood and or diamond wood and orange motif didn't really do it for me personally. Mm -hmm. So I splurged and went with the best of bench made custom shop or customized uh, options on the mini Crooked River. Went with the tan G10 with the gold pivot ring here. This knife also looks great in a suit or a pair of blue jeans, quite honestly. S90V blade steel, and it is so cool. Despite being a mini Crooked River, it's decidedly a medium sized knife. Yeah. I'm super happy with the way this turned out. And then they discontinued this color on the customizer, so I can't get the big brother to this uh, even if I wanted to. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm super happy with the way that, that look turned out. Just so, so cool. Yeah, the mini Crooked River is such a sweet design. Yeah, you've got that kind of like, Folding Hunter, like the Buck 110 Heritage. Yes. Uh, kind of channeled into a more a more modern thing. 
That's just so cool. All right, now <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just having fun now. Um, now your bread and butter stuff. Yeah, yeah. I got three Spyderco knives this year. Um, I'm are, are those only, really the only Spyderco folders you bought all year? They are the only Spyderco folders folders I bought all year. I was I'm all about the fixed blades. I'm actually astonished. <laughs> <laughs> um, even though it's not the first one on the table, I'm going to talk about this one first. The Packetwood Indela, another Knife Center exclusive. Uh, when the Indela first came out, um, I, I think like a lot of people, just thought, oh, a medium knife, like a medium in between a Delica and Endura. That's cool. Uh, I'm not exactly excited by this news, but that's cool. Mm -hmm. But the sneaky thing about the Indela is that it is kind of perfect. Like, <laughs> it's not exciting. The design isn't exciting, even kind of dressed up in this. You're really selling this knife here. I know, I know. <laughs> well, you know, the, the paradox of all this, uh, uh, the the challenge with design is, is coming up with something with personality that's gonna connect with people that also still works for as many people as possible. Mm. Um, and I really like the old school character that the pack of wood handles and the laminated blade steel give this because it is kind of an old school design. It mm. comes from the very first Spyderco designs, you know, like you can you can see the lineage back to those knives. Yeah, for sure. Um, little features like the way the the um, the kick here, you know, is not modernized like it is on this back lock where it's sort of been turned into a choil. There's features on this knife that are definitively old school, but it works like a charm. I I carried this as my only knife for a good long time. Um, I never felt wanting. I like the extra belly that this had. I was a little skeptical of it at first, but the size of this blade works really well. Mm -hmm. um, and it gives it a, a, a different reason to buy this as opposed to the Delica or the Endura yeah. other than just the it's, size. It's got a little more surface slicing thing, like, like cutting board work, for example. Yeah. And I know you do use your folders for food prep even more than I do, so that's yeah, I do. not, not I a do. consideration. <laughs> it's often just the quickest yeah. to hand, and. Yeah, this one did a great job with it. I was traveling too um, for part of the time I was carrying this, and so it, it really came in clutch for those hotel or Airbnb kitchens where the mm -hmm. knives are dull if they exist at all. If they exist at all. <laughs> um, yeah, it is like the perfect old school spider Co. It's not a perfect knife, but it's like the perfect old school spider Co. Mm -hmm. And it's the size of it is kind of funny. It's kind of like the default modern size of a medium sized pocket knife. Mm -hmm. whereas you know, things have kind of evolved into that size range, whereas when the Delica and Endura first came out, maybe less, that was less the case. So it's it's cool to see them fill that gap. Basically. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I would recommend, you know, I'm not just saying this because uh, I'm speaking here on the Knife Center channel, but the exclusive version is the one to get. It's it's really special. It just takes this knife and, and, and uh, makes it something you're gonna wanna carry and keep. Well, it's the only one that's not a uh, an FRN handle right now, too, I believe. Yeah, true. Which is a reason right there. What else from the uh, the Spyderco Oeuvre did you uh, pick up this year? I got the Manix 2 with 15V blade steel. Um, the the hype around this knife, I think, uh, took me at least by surprise a little bit, um, considering that the Manix 2 is a totally mature design mm -hmm, at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I think it comes down to the fact that uh, this blade steel was asked for specifically and the heat treatment was developed by Triple B Handmade, um, a custom knife maker slash steel expert um, who really came to Spyderco with this saying like, I think you should make a knife in 15V. Um, it offers essentially like a Maximet class edge retention. Uh, there's a ton of those ultra hard, ultra hard vanadium carbides in here. Um, real, real knife nerd stuff that we could really get into the weeds about. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a new steel. I wanted to try it. And frankly, I wanted to retry the Manix too. Mm -hmm. um, it's a knife I had and sold. Uh, I didn't quite connect with it, but the blade steel was enough to make me give it another shot. And I picked up some uh, custom scales that are coming that I think will help kind of fix some of my other um, 
Just personal quibbles about it. Personal yeah. quibbles with the knife. I'm not a huge fan of all the, the bumps here and here. Uh, so the, the scales I got are gonna kind of replace the liners, make it smoother. Yeah. That'd be cool. I think I'll connect with that a little more, but we'll see. I've always said, and I stick by this, that if you're buying a knife with the intent to modify it right out of the box, it's probably... Maybe don't buy the knife. Probably not the knife for you. And yet. And yet, I did it. <laughs> uh, maybe I got swept up in the hype. I don't know. But I, I wanted to check out the steel. I'm a big fan of Triple B Handmade. Um, I think his work speaks for itself. Um, and so then we'll see last but not goes. least... Last but not least, in fact, very not least, I've come out and said that the Stretch 2 XL is the most ergonomic Spyderco knife in their catalog, if not in all of knives. Um, and if you have a quibble with his use of the word ergonomic video, I would recommend you check out our video on knife handle ergonomics. There will mm -hmm. be a link to it either up here or down there. We're mentioning a lot of videos today, so I don't know how many <laughs> we'll be able to actually put in frame, but check out the, uh, the description box for link to that. Yeah, I, this knife is comfortable. This knife is fast and easy to hand. This knife lends itself to big and small cutting jobs. I just love the way this thing handles from the moment you put it in to your pocket to the moment that it's in use. Uh, and while this version is a little pricey, we got the full steel liners, the gray G10 and the crew wear steel. Um, I just like this design too much to not check out the tricked out version, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm really, really loving it. Um, well, last year, uh, in, in this video last year, you had bought the K390 Stretch 2, not the XL, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is... Which I still have. And, and you still love it. I think you've said that that is, in fact, their best knife design, I think, before in the past, yes? It was before they came out with the Stretch 2 XL, and I think Very the XL has supplanted it. Um, wow. They did... They did some cool stuff uh, in that they made the handle only a skosh bigger than the regular Stretch 2. And yet you get so much more blade. But they, yeah, they crammed in way more blade. Um, the original Stretch had a had a much larger handle than it did a blade. It had a bigger butt too, right? Yeah, it was a little yeah. broader. And I like the slimmer, straighter handle here. I like the extra length um, for the times I'm doing food prep. And it's just, this, this version with the, Steel liners kind of gives it an extra smoothness too, a little bit more refinement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love the Stretch 2 XL. And that that opens really. Was it this smooth right out of the box? Yeah, that's yeah. really nice. Yeah, it, it's a very cool knife. I've considered this one as well, but ultimately I have not yet bought it. And here, here's it's an interesting thing. I have several Spydercos with a straight spine like this, but the reason I always kind of move away from them is something you and I have talked about, Seth, hmm. is one particular cutting move that I tend to use a lot when I want to open something while being careful not to damage oh, what's underneath. This old chestnut. That old chestnut, which yeah. is using the drop point like, like a hunter might use a drop point to lift the tip just a little bit. So I'll get in under, under plastic wrapping or whatever, shrink wrap, just enough to pierce it, and then I can lift it up and zipper kind of right unzip. along, yeah. and that's harder to do with a, a straight spine, or even a straight clip point. Uh, and that's one where, like this Hogue, I, I miss being able to do that. Yeah, so. yeah, I could see that, actually. Uh, yeah, they used to, uh, well, speaking of old school Spyderco designs, they used to do this. The, the Delicate Endura came to a straight point like that until they started dropping the, the tip, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they've kind of gone there and back again with the, mm -hmm. with the stretch. Very, very cool. All right, that's all we've got for now. Um, these are things, like I said, we own these knives, we carry these knives. Um, we will continue to carry these knives. Yep. Um, what are we looking to do in the following, in, in this upcoming year, Seth? Um, I've, I mean, I'll continue to keep my eye out for more, you know, everyday big knives that, mm -hmm. I, that I like, but I, I feel like the, the primary part of that quest has been been done, getting to where I am here. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely think I'm going to uh, kind of minimize some of my collection. I was about to say I'm not quite sure what my next uh, rabbit hole is going to be, but it's it's going to be the uh, the travel friendly options, the travel friendly multi tools. Which it's going to be tough. I've got some again. I've got some ideas, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully I'll have something cool to talk about uh, in the future. But uh, what about you? Um, I still need more fixed blades in my life. There's a, 
Fixed blades offer such a different range of sizes from folders that I still feel like I'm just kind of getting my feet wet mm -hmm. with certain kind of design philosophies, you know? Um, I've tried big choppers, I've tried swordy machetes, uh, I've got some kind of in-between bushcrafty type designs, some EDC knives, but... Uh, There's I, more genres. Yeah. I'll tell you what, now that I'm closer here, now that uh, I'm not as far away as I used to be before I moved, I got a drawer full of all kinds of things. You should come over and we'll play with things. Play, Ooh, with, play with sharp things. That would be fun. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll see... Uh, that could be content. See what I'm missing. Could be. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a video in the future. Maybe. Does this mean I'm working on the weekend? No, we'll do it some other time. <laughs> Um, I'm curious to see how you take your, your how you trim your collection down mm. to size, if that ends up happening. Mm. I mean, just the thought experiment of like, if you started now, what knives would you pick versus the knives you ended up with because of when you started collecting? That's sort of something I've been thinking about. Like, you know, would I have this collection of knives if I started collecting today? Almost definitely yeah. not. Yeah. It's, it's, there's two ways to go about it. If it's, you know, if you had to, if, if you were starting today, how would it look like? Or if you had to restart today, let's say you lost everything, where would you go? Yeah. And for me, I the the three that I mentioned, the the rock wall, the little native slip it, and the uh, Presidio two would be the first things I repick up right here, because I could, you know, until I flesh out other things that I might like or enjoy, that could cover everything I would need, mm -hmm. very very well. Maybe that's that's some good future content too. Yeah. But in the meantime, thank you guys uh, and gals for a hugely successful 2022. Thanks for supporting us here at the channel. Um, thanks for making it, it possible for us to just get up here and talk about all these cool knives. I mean, talk about a, a, a dream gig for sure. Keep sticking around. Uh, if you want to get your hands on some of these knives, um, we'll leave links to what we can down in the description box, but of course some of these are discontinued or custom one-offs or mm -hmm. uh, that sort of thing, but check them out. I'll take you over to the knifecenter.com. We've got our Knife Rewards program. That's all the, uh, the the spiel I'll give you today. Thanks for sticking around. I'm David C. Anderson. I'm That's Seth. Oh. Thomas behind the camera. That's Seth. Hey. <laughs> and, a, and a huge thank you from the bottom of all of our hearts, and here's to a great 2023. I'm gonna give Seth a cue card. <laughs> How about we just ask him to stop For doing that? For all acquaintance, <laughs> be Cut. forgot. <laughs>